I never found a reference, but I th thought that Jules Verne, uh, an author about a hundred years before that time, had mentioned something about a mechanical heart. But I don't know. I it was sort of dreamed in my own mind that the next step, the next major step, was to show that a mechanical device uh, could be used to substitute for the human heart. The only organ in the body that you could see it, it, it function, you know, you, you have your kidneys there, they're working, your, your liver is working, everything like that, but the heart, you can actually see it um, working, and it's a fascinating organ from that standpoint. The first uh, heart transplant uh, reported from Cape Town, South Africa. It was uh, performed by a good friend of mine. His brother, I never will forget, uh, he was repairing a little femoral artery. It had an opening in it where we had perfused the patient's blood. And he turned around at me and he said, Dr. Cooley, you must think I'm a lousy surgeon, but I'm a damn sight better than my brother. And he and his brother did the first heart transplant about a week or 10 days thereafter. That always stuck in my uh, memory. Kind of interesting, I think, uh, <clears throat> that uh, we all knew about the uh, first heart transplant uh, from Cape Town, South Africa, uh, but we weren't sure whether we could uh, get involved or not, uh, or whether we were capable of doing it. But one of my residents at the time found a patient over at the Ben Taub Hospital who had uh, tried to commit suicide and had used a uh, pistol uh, into the skull, and she was definitely brain dead. And she was 16 years old, and she became our first donor. Well, I was out of town at the time. I was up in Shreveport, Louisiana, giving a lecture to the medical society there when I got word that we had this donor. So I had to charter an airplane to come back from uh, Shreveport to get to Houston in time to get involved with the transplant. transplant. I had not spent a lot of time, or any time for that matter, in the uh, Baylor laboratory uh, trying to develop the technique of transplantation. I was, I considered myself the most experienced surgeon, heart surgeon in the world at the time. And there was no question about that. So I didn't need to go practice on a bunch of dogs and cats in the animal laboratory at Baylor. Now my experience with transplantation I indicated that the heart was nothing more than a pump and that it was a very simple device compared to the liver and the kidneys, which had multiple functions in our body. But the heart had only one function, that was to pump blood and to push the blood through a circulatory system. And it revealed that it could be replaced uh, by some other device, and if not uh, a biologic uh, donor, it could be replaced by a mechanical device or an artificial heart. And Leota and I uh, looked at this device that he and his brother had uh, created down in Buenos Aires. And I said, yes, we'll uh, make all the arrangements to have the pumping device set. I bought the valves uh, that were 
then four valves in the heart, and I paid for all four of the valves, and then commissioned an engineer to make uh, this console that would pump the carbon dioxide in to activate uh, the uh, heart. And with all that in readiness, we approached this man, Haskell Carp, who is in the hospital waiting for a heart transplant. He'd come all the way from Illinois down here to get a heart transplant. But we were having a difficult time uh, getting donors at the time. And uh, our Dr. DeBakey, for example, had passed the word around to all Baylor-affiliated hospitals that they were not to, to offer a donor uh, to us over here uh, at St. Luke's and Texas Children's. So that made donors much more scarce uh, than they had been in the past. Imagine that, 40 years. Here we were working about 100 yards apart, and he, he was in the, Saint, in the Methodist Hospital, and I was in the St. Luke's and Children's Hospital. And we, 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 we didn't speak to each other. We avoided each other. But even when we were in the same room, uh, we, we never spoke to each other. And I think competitiveness, looking back on it, uh, the co competitive uh, atmosphere between the St. Luke's and Methodist uh, really made for advances in the development of cardiac surgery. Well, I've had many descriptions made uh, of me, and I'm trying to search my own mind of how I was uh, equipped uh, to exceed uh, others in uh, surgery. And uh, I don't know, I think all of my experience athletics being one uh, and playing basketball both at a, at a college and high school uh, basketball player. I think it taught me teamwork and taught me competitiveness and taught me endurance and I, I use those qualities to the best of my ability uh, to keep things in an orderly fashion. We had a motto in, in our uh, group of surgeons, in my group here at St. Luke's Children's, called it Modify, Simplify, and Apply. And any new procedure that might be reported from other institutions were uh, rather complex. These big uh, institutions like the Mayo Clinic, or the Cleveland Clinic, the place that I get, and the Boston, Boston Hospital, might do one open heart op operation a week well, by, uh, with our uh, technique, which, which was a very simple technique. We had the best uh, oxygenator to go in the pump oxygenator circuit. And we could do uh, five or six uh, operations a day, sometimes more, uh, with our little uh, device. Well, I, you know, I am a Houstonian, and I, my family, uh, my grandfather, he came to Houston maybe 140 years ago and created the Houston Heights. So I'm as much a Houstonian as anybody you know, but I'll tell you uh, something that you might use in your article. Uh, we were having a, a meeting here in our auditorium for the Phi Beta Kappa chapter uh, of this area of Houston in Harris County. And we had about 100 people showed up. And after I gave my talk about what I had been doing and so on. 
Uh, are, there, are there any questions? And somebody in the back of the room said, uh, Dr. Cooley, have you spent your entire life in Houston? I said, not yet. <laughs>